Uh, hello, uh, my name is Vijay. I'm a PhD student at uh, Medical University of Graz in Austria. Uh, in the next few minutes, I'll be talking about my work that's uh, isomerization of uh, eurocronic acid by uh, UV radiation and uh, how it modulates the skin microbiome, uh, antimicrobial peptides, and the immune function. Um, let's go to the introduction. So eurocronic acid is present uh, locally in the stratum corneum in its uh, trans isoform. Uh, and upon UV radiation, uh, trans UCA is isomerized to cis UCA, as you can see here. Um, uh, previous studies have indicated that uh, eurocronic acid is known to induce immune suppression via plenty of uh, factors such as uh, acting via 5-HT2A receptor or serotonin signaling and various other pathways. Uh, what is not known is that since skin microbiome is established all over the surface of the skin, uh, appendages, hair follicles, etc., uh, the effects of cis eurocronic acid on skin microbiome is not known or uh, also the antimicrobial peptide expression in related to cis eurocronic acid uh, formation is also not known. So our aim was to look into this uh, using the MOS models. Uh, going to the results. Uh, so the first experiment what we did was uh, to see uh, what kind of different UV radiations can transform or isomerize trans-UCA to cis-UCA. So what we did was we used a mouse, we give them different uh, UV radiation such as UVB, UVA, uh, PUVA, which is soralin plus UVA, and we used a tape stripping method to extract the uh, eurocronic acid and do a quantification using uh, HPLC. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, what we found was that UVB, uh, PUVA, as well as UVA can significantly isomerize trans eurocronic acid to cis eurocronic acid, whereas the control group uh, didn't show any significant results, which suggests that uh, these are the radiation sources that could uh, isomerize trans to cis UCA. Now, once we know that, uh, our next experiment was to investigate what happens um, after eurocronic acid is formed in the skin. So, we used, again, different uh, radiation sources such as UVB, UVA, PUVA again, but also this time we applied cis-UCA on the dorsal skin of the mice. Eight hours later, what we did was we wanted to exclude out the dead bacteria or uh, damaged bacteria. We used a treatment called SPMA, which is propidium monoazide, uh, where it excludes all the dead or damaged bacteria from coming up in the sequencing or in PCR. Uh, the first results were very interesting. We found that at uh, eight hours, eurocronic acid, application of eurocronic acid on the dorsal skin uh, modulated the bacteria such as uh, propionibacterium. bacterium. You can see that there is an increase in the abundance of this bacteria, whereas uh, species as Pseudomonas or Staphylococcus or uh, E. coli uh, was significantly reduced. So this gives us the first uh, in, uh, indication that eurocronic acid is modulating the skin microbiome. So the next one, the next interesting question we wanted to see was how does it affect the antimicrobial peptides? Because these are the peptides which maintain a homeostasis between skin microbiome and our skin's immune system. So we looked at various antimicrobial peptides such as uh, calcium binding protein, S100, A7, A8, A9, and uh, beta defensins. As you can see in the graph here that uh, after application of uh, CCUCA on the skin, almost most of the antimicrobial peptides are significantly upregulated uh, uh, except for psoriasin. Uh, so this was very interesting for us. We wanted to find out uh, what really happens, or uh, it was the first indication that really cis eurocronic acid is modulating the bacteria as well as the uh, innate immune system that is uh, uh, antimicrobial peptides. So apart from that, we also wanted to see what happens at 24 hours later. So we performed exactly the similar experiments, but this time uh, we took uh, the samples later at 24 hours after giving them uh, UV radiation or uh, cis eurocronic acid. But here, interestingly, we found that whatever species were downregulated or significantly reduced in the eight hours uh, somehow showed higher abundance at 24 hours, uh, as you can see here in this graph, such as uh, E. coli or Pseudomonas or Staphylococcus. So this was interesting again. Then we looked at the antimicrobial peptides, and we saw that most of the antimicrobial peptides are downregulated at this time point. So what was happening is at initial, at uh, the beginning after applying cis acid, uh, they were reduction in the 
microbiome, but upregulation of antimicrobial peptides. Later at 24 hours, the microbiome started to recolonize, whereas the MP expression was going down. This was uh, such a nice balance, nice, nice homeostasis between uh, microbes and uh, uh, antimicrobial peptides. So now that we know that uroconic acid is modulating skin microbiome, it's also more modulating uh, antimicrobial peptides. Uh, we wanted to show that also uh, CCUCA could uh, induce uh, or could suppress the adaptive immune response. So we used a model of contact allergy where we sensitized the mice which an, with, with an aptin such as DNFB. And a few days later, we challenged it on the ear using a low concentration or a low dose of DNFB. Uh, wild type mice or normal mice should have a significant ear swelling because of uh, the immune response, whereas mice treated with immunosuppressive factors such as uh, EV radiation should have less ear swelling because there is an immune suppression. So we gave different treatments here again with uh, different sources of UV as well as cis uroconic acid in different concentrations as you can see here in the graph. So if you look closely here, you can see that uh, the mice which received cis UCA had an uh, significant uh, amount of CHS response or uh, significant reduction in the ear swelling or increase in the induction of uh, immune suppression, which suggests that cis uroconic acid is not only modulating the innate response, but it's also uh, suppressing the uh, adaptive immune response to DNFP. All in all, to conclude, um, sorry, to conclude this, what's happening is that we found uh, PUA UVA and UVB significantly increases the formation of cis uroconic acid. Uh, and application of cis uroconic acid uh, alters the microbial landscape and the AMP gene expression both at eight hours as well as 24 hours. And also there is a dose dependent increase in immune suppression against uh, contact allergens such as DNFP uh, when the mice are pre-treated with uh, UVB, PUVA or cis UCA, but not uh, UVA alone. So. Uh, to summarize, to conclude, cis uroconic acid may have an important role in immune suppression by affecting the skin microbiome uh, as well as uh, antimicrobial peptide expression. So, thank you.